All right, thanks so much, Joy. Well, time now for a check of our top stories. And after holding a meeting with the teachers' leadership, Governor Pedro Perluisi announced that the increase of $1,000 a month be granted to teachers, and which was valid until 2024, will now be permanent. Our Francis Felix reports. After this week, massive protests of teachers joined by other public servers, Governor Pedro Pierluisi met with leaders of the teachers' organizations and pledged to sign Senate Bill 573 to reactivate the teaching career and will also put his signature to Chamber Bill 513 to guarantee the base salary increase to 2700 at a press conference, the Secretary of the State Department, Omar Marrero Diaz, said that Governor Pierluisi reaffirmed his administration's commitment to make 1,000 salary increase for all teachers permanent. Also sure that the agreements reached with the teachers implied the end of the teacher flu and massive demonstrations. Other commitment, a dialogue table will be created to seek alternatives to improve the retirement of teachers and will be made up of leaders from teachers organizations and four members of the government. Fortaleza published several tweets on his social media that summarized the points that were agreed upon at the meeting. Meanwhile, hundreds of teachers await to the end of the meeting in a protest in front of Fortaleza, led by the Federation of Teachers Educamos and UNETE. This meeting was scheduled for the day of the massive protest, but after thousands of teachers arrived in Fortaleza, the governor did not attend them. From Old San Juan, Puerto Rico, Francis Felix. All right, thanks so much, Francis. We're switching gears now as St. Lucia's Prime Minister has tested positive for COVID-19. He found out his status when he did a routine PCR test on Tuesday. Now, according to a statement issued by the office of the Prime Minister, that's where they found out that information. Now, he is now in isolation and will be working from home. The government statement said the Prime Minister is expected to make a full recovery within the next few days. He posted an update to his Facebook page saying, in times like these, I wish my selfie game was stronger so I could post a picture, but until such time, I just want to reassure everyone with this message that I am doing well. And quote, now the work has not slowed down. I just get to do it from home now. Thank you all for your thoughtful words and prayers. Let us continue to observe the COVID protocols and get vaccinated. The prime minister told local media that he was doing well and had exhibited no symptoms so far. I'm fine. I'm doing well. I have absolutely no symptoms. I continued, I did my gym this morning and I'm doing fine. I think that the, the, the vaccination helped me. As you know, I'm double vax and I'm, I'm also, I also took the, the booster. So for, I am doing, I'm doing great, but I'm just observing uh, the protocols and I should be, I'm working at, I'm working at home, I'm working from home for that matter and I should be out very soon. Now he is the latest CARICOM leader to test positive for COVID-19. Belize's Prime Minister John Bersano contracted the virus earlier on for the second time. Now Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley had also previously tested positive for the virus. In the meantime, the World Health Organization says the number of deaths worldwide due to COVID-19 continues to climb. The WHO published its weekly epidemiological update on Tuesday. Now, according to the organization, the U.S. reported the highest number of new deaths, followed by India, Russia, and Brazil. Overall, COVID deaths increased by 7% last week compared to the week before. WHO reports as of last Sunday, over 5.7 million people have died from the virus across the world. While the number of deaths increased, WHO says the number of global COVID cases reported has gone down. 17% fewer cases were reported around the world. And should you wear a mask when you're inside of a public space? Every day it seems to be harder and harder to answer that question. The CDC says yes if you live in an area with high COVID transmission, but most states on the U.S. mainland now say you don't have to. Amy Kiley has an update on current recommendations in the U.S. mainland. To mask or not to mask, that is the question. When it comes to the answer, state and federal authorities increasingly seem at odds. It is confusing. It's worrisome to people. 
we're trying to figure out. But what I've tried to do, I've tried to make sure we have all the vaccines needed, all the boosters needed, all the masks are needed, all the protection that's needed. President Joe Biden is backing up the CDC. It recommends people mask up in indoor public spaces if they live in areas with higher substantial transmission. That's most of the country. But only eight states still require masks inside public spaces. And five of those say that'll change within the next couple months. We believe that through the Department of Health, through all the uh, data that we have, that we're, we're trending in an area that's going to be very safe for our local districts uh, to make up their decision. The mixed messages leave a lot of people confused. To help, like experts weather, are weighing in. There, it's still raining a lot of virus out there. It's part of those CDC projections. They still think that over the next four weeks, 60,000 more people could die. I mean, these are still just tragic numbers. At the same time, the numbers are coming down, and we know Omicron is uh, not, as, uh, not as deadly. It doesn't make people as sick as these previous variants. In the end, the CDC mainly just offers COVID-19 guidance, not mandates. I think every state's got to make its decision. I'm Amy Kylie reporting. All right, thanks so much, Amy. Well, meantime, in a recording obtained exclusively by CNN, a judge who was overseeing the case of President Jovenel Moise's assassination said Haitian Prime Minister Ariel Henry was involved in planning it. The recording was made in late 2021. The judge did not know he was being recorded when he called Henry the prime suspect in the case. Henry has not been charged in Moise's assassination. Moise was killed in July of 2021 when armed men entered the president's home. Now that was two days after Moise was nominated, nominated Henry as the prime minister. Henry has not responded to a request for comment on the judge's recording. Meanwhile, dozens of suspects were arrested in the following weeks following that assassination, but none have been formally charged.